Yeah, you know, Rob's going to be coming through to do his final once over that in the Whittemore Road, the number six road. No worries. Let's get a superhighway and Scott right to their home. I suspect that people will definitely go superhighway speeds on the road. I think we're going to put somebody up on that Whittemore Road. Yeah. yeah. Brian knew that was going to happen. <laughs> Well, the other one, and somebody didn't ask me on that. You know, what about the book? Yeah, I'll work. They go too fast, so be on the fine of anyway. French word. Trees get them. <laughs> Trees is always, yeah. <laughs> Before you had to pay, it looked like that little corner there. It looked like a yeah. Somebody comes up there and makes a lot of money there. They spend a lot of money. Tires, yeah. yeah. Even as a teenager, I had to like buy my own tires and the vehicle and all that stuff. So I didn't find a lot of joy in that. Same here. Blow one rear end out of your vehicle and uh, learn your lesson. Yep. Not that I ever did that, of course. Oh, yeah, I've got yours, yeah. Sound like Theo. Huh? <laughs> 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 it's super long, I think. Take some things, yeah. Yeah. Kind of had to get rubber over the whole train. Everybody was together. You need to go backwards and then, yeah, and then drop it, it into gear. <laughs> they have more fun with that thing. I used to go up and down snowmobile trails with it. The Volkswagen? Yeah. yeah. Why didn't I? Didn't drive that much in the cold, cold days, I bet, though. <sighs> no. Especially when you leak in the mantle. Mm. Eat it. Now we know what happened to him. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to give her a point for that one, though. That was pretty good. <laughs> uh, did we ever sign this contract? <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing, sir. Public comments. Please state your name and the town that you're from. Lois? Yes, uh, Lois. Hi. Um, he was the representative we were talking about, right? Yes, yes. one of them. Okay. <laughs> one of them. Okay. We, I came up to register my car, and the girls told me that the program that we had all signed up for for tax reduction or well walking the taxes uh, had gone down the tubes and they gave me the paperwork for the new program which we'll have to hire somebody to figure it out but anyway and uh, I asked tonight or the two that were here now I'm asking the rest of you is there any way uh, that the town could use monies from the casino and continue the program. Uh, well, that isn't really a state issue, it's a town issue, but the town 
You'd have to bring that up to a town meeting to yep. be approved by all the taxpayers of town Yeah. But it all depends on what we have. For so one of the things I cautioned uh, Lois about when she brought that up is the fact that um, state law dictates when it comes to uh, property taxes and uh, interest, everything from interest rates to foreclosure procedures and, and all of those things, they dictate the exemptions and so forth. So I would, um, I would be uh, concerned on whether or not the legality of such a thing. So I would need to research that. That's what he told me, and then he said that the board would have to give him a directive to research. Well, all I know is that on the stadium that I didn't vote against it, I voted for it to keep it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, all the girls told me that right away. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, because at the end of Suckman, I see what it does for the taxpayers that, you know, the town, especially elderly in the town. So. Well, I know that I was here just literally, Teresa registered my car, we didn't take anything, and two people came in and asked, to sign up for the program. Yeah. And that's why I knew about it. Well, Otherwise, nobody's told us that this program that we all signed up for does well, no longer exist. They created a program. They didn't have the financing for oh, well, it. Plus, plus, on top of that, is there's a misrepresentation on how if you did your house now and then you sold that house, the next house you moved to, even though it might be worth three or four hundred thousand, you're still paying the same tax as you did in the house. That wasn't the, kind of the meaning of the bill. That wasn't supposed to be the way it was. It was supposed to be you pay the tax here, but you move on, and you still get that same type of reduction, but you still pay a higher tax. Mm -hmm. but a lot of people didn't, so you had a lot of people in Cape Elizabeth and down in that area moving in a higher income house and you're paying the same tax. Mm -hmm. That is right. Well, as I said, I really think that it was, I think the concept is good because there's a lot of people who do get out of their houses and we really don't have any uh, senior citizen housing up here to amount anything. Um, and uh, I'm sure it doesn't get better going further north. And so I, I would say that it, I still think it's a program that we should consider as a town some way to, you know, try it. Doesn't have to be millions of dollars. We just. But where do you have the cutoff? Same cutoffs, but you don't. Uh, you just don't carry it through. You can, if you wanted to, uh, make a longer stick. Of, actually, you just sit down with a pencil and a piece of paper, and you can figure out how much it's going to cost you a year. And that, how many people they all know, how many people in town are 75 and over and lived here, say 10 years or whatever it was. And it, it, it's a mathematical thing that should be able to figure out. And I'm willing to bet it's really not as much as we really think it is. Joyce Ryan, um, is it going to be replaced by another program? Not as, I, as of now. No. Unless they come back next session with something different. Mm -hmm. yep. They do have the, uh, what do they call that? Bait, not an abatement, but anyway, the $240 one. Uh, that's what the girls are passing out. But it's, that's not a new program. That's been here right along. And that's another thing. You're really going to have to stop telling the people in the town what is available to them. Now, I don't know how you do that, but um, it's not doing anybody any good if nobody knows about it. I mean, it may look good to somebody on paper for their resume or something, but not the people that are paying the bill. So. Do you have that on? I don't know, but what paper are you getting as a replacement for this tax stabilization that you're given because that program mine. was not replaced with anything? No. no. It's not replaced. No, so what did you give her? I, I believe what she's talking about is is information that's on main.gov for, I should probably print you out something that was on main.gov. So you can go onto main.gov and there's programs there 
Lois. And that's probably where she was directing you to. There's, there's a few. No, she gave me the form for the government. It's a, it's a it's IRS form. Did, did she give you an HAF tax form or a tax credit form? She's not. She she shouldn't really have any forms to to give out. She might have just got on there and she printed it out for you for informational purposes. But there's no replacement. I'll take a look at it and I'll yeah. explain it. Well, it doesn't replace, you know, nowhere near the amount, but it is a discount of whatever you want to call it. If right. you're, you know. yeah. She probably got on main.gov and just gave you a form to, for you to look into it. Now, there's forms that we have that um, for like a veteran exemption, exemption forms, yeah. so it could yeah. have been a homestead exemption that yeah. you had but you didn't have, or a veteran exemption, or that type of form yeah. that the town has that is statewide also, that will help. Well, I, as I say, I just think that if, you, if the state or the town, I don't care which it is, comes up with a program and we all sign up, you know, we don't all sign up, but a lot of us did. And then if I hadn't been registered in my car, I wouldn't have known that wasn't in existence any longer. So you need to somehow communicate that the programs that your taxpayers are counting on yeah. uh, no longer exist. And you, are you on the website at all? No. No. Right. Because we, we put that on our um, main, Oxford main. Um, website. So there's got to be another means of communication somehow. I was in the paper. <laughs> <laughs> we can publish anything that is submitted. So, like, uh, I know Norway town office sends um, updates uh, just in like a press release form. Do you guys? We haven't typically done that. But. Do you have a newsletter? Okay, so I think that was it. Yeah, take a, take a look at the Norway town um, town office section. And it's just like a, I don't even know if they do it every week, but they just they just send updates to the newspaper. Thank you. So it would be a good idea to get something out there in different formats to let the uh, taxpayers in Oxford know that the tax stabilization. Uh, bill that was passed by the legislature last year has been reversed and it no longer will exist. So we get one year. This year still comes. Did they find that money in for it? That's what yeah, they have the one, told me. They have one year. One year. It, it's that if you've already been signed up, they're going to honor that. Okay. Yeah, the that next year. tax bill. This next it's tax bill coming up. We'll stabilize for those who have signed up already. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I hope they find the funds in the Anybody else? Public comment? Yes, Patricia Thomas, and I live on the Weatherbrook Road. And <coughs> I've been working the last couple of years on trying to get that road cleaned up. Um, people picking up their yards, not trash everywhere and have been a bit unsuccessful. Um, when you come home from dinner some night at 9, 30, 10 o'clock and you see a rat running across the road, um, you should see some of these homes. And I, my, my husband and I have talked about selling our home. There is no way that I can sell my home with the Weberbrook Road looking like it does. And I have lived there for close to 45 years and it is absolutely horrible. And I need help. I, I'm upset, I'm angry. I have been working on this for two years. Um, I don't get calls back. I sent a letter and I started with Joelle. Um, I happened to talk to Kingston 
on Monday afternoon, and I am very, very frustrated. And something needs to be done. And when I looked at the paperwork and it said code enforcement, unsafe property, code enforcement, update. This town is not following the code now. So I'm not really sure about an update. Because if they were being followed, you wouldn't have five or six unregistered vehicles in your yard. You wouldn't have an ABC rubbish container that is overflowing. You wouldn't have mice, you wouldn't have rats, and that right there has turned into a health problem. And I am very, very upset. And I am going to start taking steps. Is there, without giving a specific address, a window, 400 to 500, Robert Brook Road? Mm -hmm. I've given Kingston three, but I had um, this winter given four. Um, so Kingston has that. And there's some more up the street. Um, I'm not going. You know, I'm pretty limited where I go. I come down the street in Pottle Road, told Kingston yesterday diagonally from our lovely town office, there is probably four or five unregistered cars right on the corner. He said he had never seen that, which is fine. Um, Right beside the Kimball's house, I am friends with Don Kimball. Mark and I stopped there. I walked his property. They can't use their outback because it smells of trash and rubbish. And I think that is ridiculous. They have so many vehicles in their yard, they now park on the street. Weberbrook Road is not that wide. So for you to, you have to slow down. You've got to go, you know, out because they can't fit any more trash and cars in their yard. Down the street, same way. Independence Drive, end of Independence. If they have one car sitting out there, they got six. And they have the ABC rubbish. I was dog sitting on Monday, and the woman came out and threw a trash in her yard because the ABC rubbish is full. I think this is horrible, and we have to figure out a way because this is a health issue. And if I could sell my house, I would be gone by the weekend. And the sad part is Weber Brook has never been so bad as it is now. And I've lived there for 45 years. And we have to do something. Thank you. Any public comment? Business items 5.1 Police and Fire Department capital request continued. Uh, yes, at the last meeting there was a discussion of the purchase of uh, portable police radios and fire radios. Uh, ultimately, the board, uh, when we got to the fire radios, asked because of the purchase of multiple radios if we could see if there was a better bid price or not bid but purchase price. Uh, short version is that Deerville Wireless is already giving the state bid price on these items, so the price is as low as it can go. So, um, if the board is open to purchasing of the fire department radios for $5,313, um, looking for that approval if that's still in the paper. 
the police ones were, were approved at the last one. Well, it was just a, we pretty much had a, were in agreement that we would do it. Mm -hmm. At the time, we were just wondering if it was a bad deal if we got it. So I guess if you look at the motion, I'll make a motion. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Vote. Thank you. 5.2 town facilities, phone system upgrade discussion. So at the last meeting, uh, we had discussed the phone systems at the public safety building. Um, Selectman asked that to be looked at to do that, expand that for all town facilities, and it was asked to be placed on this agenda. I've been working with uh, the, our contact at the at the vendor for the phones. Um, they put together a quote, but I just received it yesterday, as you can see in your packets. Um, there's a couple things in the quote that, uh, have, that these are internet based. So there's a couple things in the quote that I'm concerned about regarding internet access at, uh, say, the town garage. And I just want to, before, uh, before we <coughs> move forward with this, I just would like to verify that the correct level of internet is available at those facilities before, before this is, moves forward. Uh, and I just didn't have time to do that before this meeting. So if the board is comfortable, uh, I apologize it's not ready to go tonight, but if the board's comfortable with tabling it until the next meeting, and I'll have those answers, and we can move forward. Motion to table. Second. Motion second in discussion. All those in favor? <coughs> Five point three. Except four thousand dollar police department equipment grant from Walmart. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Motion second discussion. I'm just curious as to the limitations. I'm trying to think the if we were able to print that. Or? Yeah, I uh, was it, the chief was able to forward me. It's a little funky because of the phone, but uh, it, it just is for police equipment. It doesn't specify <coughs> specifically what it is for. All radios. All those in favor? Thank you. Department and report. So Kingston's here tonight to uh, hit on two items. Uh, the first is an unsafe property that he's been addressing, and then the second is his uh, code enforcement department update. So, Kingston. Yeah. So the very first one is this is when we're going to go into 260 King Street, correct? Yes, please. Yep. Yep. So. Actually, um, we have in the audience some people who are directly involved in this, I think since 2014. Uh, this is dated back to CEOs now. I think even the board was involved with uh, dealing with legal issues with this. And so uh, this one's not full Monty per se. We're not trying to take down the whole building, but we are trying to correct, if you can see the pictures, there's a void in the bathroom where the structure had collapsed. I think it was this winter, or was it last winter? This one, I believe. Yeah, so two, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the, the last notice that we gave was actually hand delivered by our own PD, uh, and that was May 27, 23rd, to the owner. Through our pop, uh, property maintenance ordinance, we were actually hopefully going to be successful in having him repaired of his own volition. Uh, I believe right after he got the notice, the, a, a trailer had showed up right on the property as I was passing by one time driving to do an inspection. Uh, I was pretty hopeful that he was going to do it himself. That trailer has since left and it is still there. Uh, so I was going to send the owner another notice saying we were going to follow through with what we were saying we were going to do on that notice sent on May 24th. However, before I did so, I sent it to Mark A. Bauer, our counsel, and he actually directed uh, a better approach, and that's through the dangerous building law, which would allow us to, we have two options at this point. We can either correct it and send him a notice of it after the fact, or we can give him a heads up that we're gonna correct it. Uh, whichever we choose, uh, either we have a right, because I've deemed it as unsafe, and, and it's an issue for health and safety of the public, because it's an open structure. Anytime you have one of these, it, it's, it is a dangerous building. And you know, uh, State Fire Marshal's office has actually given us clear instruction that we should do everything we can to either abate them, demolish them, what have you. So I've talked with the gentleman uh, that does our mowing, 
because he's kind of a, a jack of all trades. He gave us a quote of uh, $1,800 to board it up, cover it up, make it look somewhat prettier than it is now, and seal the issue uh, and clean up the mess. And we have the right to do that even without even notifying him because it's a hazard to life uh, and property of the public of the town. Um, so that's where we're at with that. Kingston? Just to clarify, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Just to clarify for the board, when we say correct it, um, we're talking about um, sealing up that end of the home, right? Or that end of the structure. We're not talking about rebuilding anything, or we're just talking about sealing it up, right? Removal of the debris. If you see the pictures, you'll see there's a pile of the debris. Actually, this picture doesn't do it justice because for some reason some of it got stacked in the meter pile, I think. But um, maybe, maybe, yeah. I don't know. There's, there's, there's some weeds growing in, so I think it looks prettier now. But uh, the object is to clean, remove, and then board up the openings. And uh, the gentleman that's going to do the removing had the idea of just boarding up the whole area just so that it's not you know, interior uh, view that we can see and make it prettier for, for the complainant, basically, you know, and to secure it. Obviously, that's the primary goal. Now the person that owns it, they agreed to do it once? Well, Doesn't they... Doesn't want anything to do with it now, or what? Well, they, they actually agreed to fix the issue at, at cause, which I believe the select board was involved back, like, many years ago. He ended up putting a roof on it, and that took care of the structural issues. And the town, I think, went to court three different times, and they ended up, like, fall, not following through with that and saying that was okay. Uh, but this is obviously where it's at now, and so this is this is not that. We're not trying to, you know, demolish it again. We're just trying to take care of this one issue. Has somebody lived in it? Nobody's nobody's been living in it. Nobody's been living in it. Did you say the cost is going to be eighteen hundred? Eighteen hundred dollars. Uh, I don't know if we've gotten anything in writing yet, but that's kind of a theoretical <coughs> quote. Who's going to pay for that? So. We, uh, the way it works is we can lien the property. So the town would have to front the cost and then the property would be liened. So if this person went to sell the property, there would be a lien against it. So it would be clear title. Um, that's our only recourse. So that's why we're here tonight. That needs to be done. This has gone on way too long. It never should be coming back here. Um, I've been on the board at least twice when this issue has come <coughs> here, both when Joelle was here and now, and it needs to go away and a correction needs to be done. So I think the town needs to do whatever it has to do and pay whatever we have to pay to get it taken care of and lean that property under the law that allows us to do this. And if he doesn't need to be notified, then don't notify him because He's had long enough to take care of this. Mm -hmm. I live on that street. This couple here lives right next door. And I can tell you, if I lived next door, I wouldn't be as quiet as they've been. It needs to be taken care of. They've been very good about getting in contact with mm -hmm. me and checking in on me, uh, keep, keeping me aware of, of uh, kind of the status of it. Because I, I can't be everywhere at once, as you know. So they, they've been kind of good about that. So I. That would be my recommendation. Did you Is want to say something? Is this guy who paid his taxes on us? Yeah. 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 For the taxes? Yeah, yeah he does. Yeah. Kingston, if I may. Yeah. Uh, did, you, did you talk about there was some tax statute that, that, that could be levied against this house? Well, that, that's essentially what this is, but it's only the cost of the, the work that, we're, that we would be using town funds for. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's actually one of the items that the lawyer has given us step by step that through this law, that's it's the only avenue we actually have. Just to put a lien? Uh, yes, if he doesn't pay us back. We, we actually send him a bill, and then if he doesn't pay it in 30 days, then we can assess it as a special tax. Oh, okay. All right. Thanks. Is that a motion, Sharon? It is a motion. Sorry, good. Motion and second, any discussion? Is this building structurally sound? No. Mm -hmm. That, I yeah, haven't. It wasn't when I'm back when I was by chief, because I condemned this building. It wasn't. There were three structural engineers yeah. that went through back in whatever that was, 2014, and deemed it not safe. Scotty Owens, I don't know what happened. There was some deal made about the roof going on, but they, I think it was two structural engineers. That went in and said, "No, it's not safe." It should Wake be up every back. morning in my in our lovely home that we keep up and try to 
keep the town looking great by doing so and look out look out that eyesore every day so maybe the other avenue we can take too is have someone look at that building and and if it's declared unsafe then there's another step that can be taken as far as taking it down can we have it condemned yes you can do that that's, that that's also an option too a little that's bit more expensive of an option but yes but you can still lean the property mm -hmm. um, through the dangerous building law yeah through the dangerous <coughs> building law um and like scott said it it was condemned when he was unsafe and he was fire chief but i would even go so far as to say that that should be probably the first thing we should do rather than just board it up because that's not going to solve any problem that building's still going to be there it's still going to be unsafe if it is and it's still going to continue to deteriorate can you have the state fire marshal's office okay. uh technically i think we just can hire an engineer to give us yeah. an opinion because mm -hmm. for whatever reason the, when the roof went on it i think the board at the time decided that was fine yeah. so we could just have another engineer go in get another report take that report use that as evidence because i'm certainly not going to go in there right now and just poke around and hopefully fall through the ground and mm -hmm. you know so the, other, the original report uh page then you another round i believe i actually found a file that was misfiled that is uh two inches thick of other stuff and i actually didn't have a chance to go through it but in the regular file it's only about a half inch thick i didn't see it in there it's yeah. probably in the two inch thick one mm -hmm. so when you were fire chief if it was condemned unsafe in that manner we were, we were, talk, we were talking about turning it down having it torn down right. so does it is that still good would that original report it's probably standing. not because when i condemned it uh the town allowed him to put the, the roof you can see the roof sag and it's like i ain't going inside there i'm just going to condemn it as it sits because i mean there's been nothing done to that house for yeah. years well, and i don't see anything well, happening to that house in, in the number of years it's been there so either we deal with it or i mean there's not that one there's a couple others in town that we need to deal with and, once it's right there in the right department yeah so so i would i would support taking that measure versus um so we had a motion in the second yeah i'll withdraw withdraw your motion and i'll i'll make the motion that we we have the property looked at by an engineer to determine the status of um, being unsafe and if it is, then proceed with. Well, you want to withdraw the first one? I mean, there's no sense of putting 2,000 in there and having it the I, I did. I'm sorry. Uh, I did withdraw. Oh, okay. Sorry. Did you no, that's withdraw okay. your second? I did. Okay. I did withdraw my second. Okay. <laughs> Good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. I, I don't know the process of Kingston. Or if, if it's similar to what we're saying, mm -hmm. is the opening being dangerous to right. the, the property? We can treat it the same way as we would this small section. Just demo the whole building and uh, send the bill to the owner. And if they don't pay, then we can special, assess mm -hmm. the special tax. Mm -hmm. And if they don't pay the tax, then mm -hmm. then tax it fire. It'll go through the lien and foreclosure process. Yeah. Well, I think that's after a few years, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. But, uh, that's all mortgaged. Yeah. I mortgaged? Sorry, say that again. Is it mortgaged? Uh, that I don't. I believe he's the sole owner. Yeah. I think okay. the the individual that owns it. Like last time we went to them, I think it wasn't. I think if I remember right, yeah, that I don't think there's a lien holder on it at all. Yeah. So Sharon had a motion to look into the condemning. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? <coughs> Let's keep us informed on that process too. Mm -hmm. Yep. We don't want it to take six months. Right. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. okay. So that one. Um, so an update as far as. Hold on a minute. So. 
to respond to the public comment earlier, I've got a list of the four and uh, there's, there's more than four, honestly. And I deal with these pretty, pretty consistently. Um, so the four that, that were mentioned, I had actually had a chance. There was one of them that I had stopped by June 1st. Uh, this was this was something that I had found the owner outside, and so I stopped and talked with this gentleman and told him, gave him a verbal, said, what's going on? He's mentioned that he had a garage and it collapsed, or uh, one of those tarp garages and it collapsed, and that's why he was seeing that, and I told him he ought to clean it up, and if he doesn't, I'm going to send him a letter for 30 days. So I'm going to have to send that letter because it's still, still a mess. He, he's tr basically treating his yard as the garage without actually having the garage as well as a trash can. So that's that's a property maintenance issue that I'm going to be sending a letter to. Uh, another one on Weber Brook, I had spoken with him. Uh, he's, he's actually a uh, kind of not doing too well. A uh, old Vietnam vet gave him a verbal that he ought to at least take care of a few of his vehicles. He mentioned that he didn't have anybody young enough in his family that would be able to help him and he'd do it the best he could. Um, I just straight up gave him a verbal. I didn't say, didn't threaten him with a 30 day. His health wasn't too well, so I wasn't gonna hit him, hit him when he was down. Uh, the other one down the road on Independence, I actually stopped and talked to that owner, gave her my card, and she was very, very uh, frustrated that I was even there, or that I even showed up, and uh, that's not really my issue. I'm gonna send her a letter. If she doesn't clean it up, I told her I'd give her a week because it was it was pretty bad. There was like five vehicles there right in the front. There's an island in the, in the loop of that location. And the dumpster was overflowing, which she said she hadn't paid the bill, uh, but was hoping they would still come pick it up anyway. Uh, I've had a few that came in that have nothing to do with this that actually, one of them is a dangerous building down on 4th Street, which that's, that's actually, um, has, has actually has metal roofing coming off and landing in the road, so that's kind of a high priority. A lot of these, I take them as a kind of a patience by precedence, you know, if, if they're bleeding out of their extremities, I kind of take care of them quick. That's a high priority. That just came in today. Um, I've got a list here that dates back to 2022 that I've been keeping an eye on. Uh, a couple junkyards, a couple from our, um, one of our local junkyard recyclers who he's been keeping me on, on my toes about um, some of the people that I've, I've actually had issues with, I've sent a letter recently to a, this one dates back to the prior code officer. We had an issue with uh, the owner not being alive and we had a wrong address and now the, the, the deed has been corrected so I have a, a good address for them and I did send this to them July 24th. That, that's an address in Utah, and the owners, um, the, the, uh, sorry, the occupants are kind of into racing, if you will, and so they have a lot of junk debris from race cars, and the, uh, the neighborhood's not really pleased with them. That, that's a Kylie Avenue issue. Uh, you probably haven't been forwarded this, but it, again, it's pictures with colors. And that's the last one down on the right. Uh, second to last one down on the right. But that one, they've been they've been sent this, and we will probably, hopefully, get the certified mail back, assuming that everything works well with the address. Because, like I said, we've had issues with the address. In fact, the prior code officer tried to no avail, even notifying the owner because of the address. So I think this one will stick. But that one's that one's still pending. And um, you know, as 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 the public comment has kind of aired the grievance on yes this is this is certainly an issue and it is something that I do take seriously and uh, like like the King Street residents in, in, in the audience have, have uh, kind of kept me you know constantly updated on it I, I didn't necessarily always get that from uh, Miss Thomas it, it wasn't constant it was I think I heard from her when we were in the old building maybe once or twice I did mention I would call her back if I had any updates <coughs> Fortunately, that fell through the cracks. Um, and the last time I talked with her, or the most recent time we talked with her was Monday, gave her an update, felt like we had an understanding, and I believe uh, you know we're here tonight so that she can hear that understanding again. So that's where I stand. Not to bring up any bad topics, but how do we how do make out of the other ones over on the other side of town? Uh, the, the, was it three, 
You had the one right there by the uh -huh. railroad tracks, and then you had the one up on top Nine of Robinson. Nine Woodmore, and then three, is it 301 or 311 uh, Robinson? 322. Three, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 That, uh... I mean, they've been going on for quite a while. That well. gentleman actually cleaned it up, the, the yeah. double mobile home with the race car and the tires. He came in of his own volition right after the property maintenance ordinance came down, and he just didn't want to have anything to do with that ordinance, so he just did it, took it upon himself. The Nine Whittemore, uh can't remember the, the lady's name, but she, Dolores, Dolores. She, Dolores, she had a building permit recently, two building permits actually, one for a deck that she was rebuilding, and then a shed, because she's going to put some of the stuff that is accumulated on her yard, hopefully in one of those sheds. I think most of it's still in the attic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's, those are kind of constant revolving issues, um, but there's, as you know, there, there, I've named probably 10, there's, there's probably 30. There's uh, another one right up there just before you went out know, East Oxford Road before you get to where the quarry is. Right. I think 90, 91. That old trailer that's in there, man, it's getting more and more garbage in there by the week. I see they have garbage all stacked up by the tree, by the road, and then they Maybe. took the top right over it. So. Truth, truth be told, there could, probably could be another dedicated code enforcement officer yeah. just <laughs> property maintenance issues. I'm not trying to put that on the town to have two code officers because that's uh, expensive. But um, I am I am going to be pursuing these more, obviously, as we try and flex our property maintenance ordinance muscles. As we've learned, we can't really flex some areas that we thought we could flex. Uh, we're probably going to have to fall back on dangerous building law for the buildings, but the junkyards, junkyard law doesn't work as it really should, like the dangerous building. We can't necessarily go in and clean it up, uh, but dangerous buildings, we can't. So it, it's kind of a, a learn, you know, kind of testing the waters with how these ordinances actually work. Um, and we kind of just got a trial and error with them. But didn't we just vote on one? Sorry? That's what he's referencing, Colby. Yeah. yeah, so the property maintenance ordinance. You know, the, the, the member, because you have to have something to have some teeth in it. Well, and it does. Because teeth. Because, well, it, it's more like, it's not a full set of teeth, it's like maybe three teeth, so you don't really get a good bite. So, the, in talking with the lawyer, uh, for instance, the, the dangerous building situation, I thought, through this ordinance, we could utilize that and kind of do it a little easier through the ordinance, but he just says, just do it through the law. Uh, and I thought the same thing applied with junkyards, and it doesn't necessarily work that way. And so the junkyard process, uh, unless it's a health hazard, health ha the health officer role is, I've actually had success down on uh, Burns Road. I think they had a, a young girl that was being negatively impacted. They actually, I actually got her out of the house. So that's actually a successful story. But um, usually if it involves children, that, those, are, those are high priority ones too that I deal with. So, so the dangerous building law actually for any municipality has a lot more teeth than what we had put in our ordinance. And we actually did know that at the time, that we would have more teeth in that. Um, because that was one of the issues I had with building that ordinance up so that we would have more authority to do, to take care of these problems. All we had to do, and I mean, I've been through this, all we had to do was fall back to the state law. And that's what we need to do now. In any case that you have, I would use your authority as the code officer to utilize this, those state laws for the da dangerous building and just do it. Right, right, yeah. And, and uh, as I said before, dangerous buildings is probably a third of mm -hmm. the 30 that we have. So uh, I guess the one good thing about the property maintenance ordinance is it does put the residents on notice. Most people don't care what a state law says. An ordinance, an ordinance does kind of put them on notice that look, we're going to be pursuing these. And like I said, somebody, a few people have actually taken it upon themselves to do it. But um, I do, I do kind of have to be everywhere at once with these, and, and that's pretty difficult. I was running around like a chicken with my head cut off, just catch, catching up on inspections. Uh, of course, following the speed limit, of course. Uh, <laughs> but um, it, it is, it is difficult in a day to, to do everything at once. And I, I'm not saying that that you don't do what you're supposed to do, but what I'm saying is that I just think that we need, to, there needs to be follow-up, and it's not just you, it's prior code officers. It's, we have to make sure that these things are followed through to the end so that we're not looking at them 
nine years later. And yeah, I like agree. Like this case here on King Street. I agree. So. I, and, I, and I will say to the defense of code officers in my, in my uh, realm, we are dropping like flies and the new ones coming in aren't so eager to come in. So there is a void in this, this type of role. So it's, this is a problem statewide. It's not just Oxford. I realize that. I know you do, Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for that report. Can I ask on your own maintenance, on, on the maintenance, property maintenance, uh, if you find, you know, that all this junk laying around, so, okay, you send them a letter and, and, and if they don't do anything, where's, where's the teeth in that? I mean, what do you do then? Usually it's through state law, like if it's just on their, on their, on their yard, we, we just have to go through the legal process generally, make sure we're you know, hearing from our lawyer, making sure we're doing the next step that, that's right, because um, that's really ultimately the avenue that we're going to be attacking these from, unless, of course, it's a health issue. Okay, but the health issue is just, well, a lot of garbage laying around and rats going through is the health issue. Right, right. So what's... Well, then... Usually you'd have to show some kind of evidence that there's a rat coming from a property. Usually I can take that. I can't just say, hey, there's a rat across the road. Well, mm -hmm. where's that rat coming from? Mm -hmm. You know, There's gotta be proof somewhere. And usually a written complaint referencing where these locations are. Uh, some of the locations I've been referenced, I just got the addresses just recently. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's kind of hard to pursue if I don't know exactly where to look. Right, no, I understand your problem. I'm just saying, what, if you find it, what, what, what's the remedy? What, what are the pay? Are you giving them some kind of fine? Are you, I mean, what are you doing if you find this? I think what she's driving at, Kingston, maybe you could just kind of jump on with the process. You know, you give the 30 day notice and then the following 30 day notice. You know, at what point does it get to the point where we're going to court? So, so through that process, mm -hmm. at the moment they're notified, mm -hmm. through state law, there's a per day violation if they neglect to do it. And mm -hmm. if it goes to court and the judge finds them liable that mm -hmm. they did neglect it, we can charge them that fine per day. I believe it's uh, $50 to $2,500 per day, depending on ne how negligent the judge mm -hmm. finds them. Mm -hmm. Of course, these court costs and these fees mm -hmm. usually are not desirable by the town, but um, I think once we learn how to properly navigate how to do it, we'll mm -hmm. be successful. Thank you. One of the things um, on June 1st, uh, you gave a verbal on the trailer, and here we are August 1st, and a letter has not been sent. I have called the town. I have called Kingston. I have not gotten calls back. I saw him Monday. One of the things that really took me back is he told me that he does not call people back. So, we need to figure out, and that is a health risk, whether a rat was coming from that house or not. You walk down the property of the Kimballs, how do they have to live like that when the property in that trailer, the trash, starts at the back of the trailer and goes to the back of the property. And that is not a health issue. I stopped walking by that place because it smells so bad in the summer. That has to be a health issue. Mm -hmm. to speak and if to I don't get, if I don't get a call back, gave me his card, I'll start emailing. But that's not right. I have been working for two years. Now, my feet are in. My feet are in the mud, and I am not gonna stop. If I have to call every channel, six, eight, and 13, and have them come wherever and talk to me, this is gonna start happening. That's how upset I am. Kingston, say something? So the comment about not calling people back, I find that uh, extremely misrepresented. So I said I don't always have the opportunity to call complainants back, especially when it's a broad complaint saying, go look at Coldwater Brook Road. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna call you about Coldwater Brook Road. I don't have the authority to clean up Coldwater Brook Road. Uh, I do expect that people do kind of, 
you'd let me finish talking, please. Okay. Uh, when someone usually gives a complaint, like the neighbors at King Street on 260 King Street, they usually keep in contact with me and they do have an email thread and that makes it a lot easier. Never once have I seen an email from Ms. Thomas. Never once, actually, have I even gotten a letter from her, as she said. Never once have I had a voicemail since June 1st from her. The first time I heard from her in two years, since 2001, at the old building, was Monday. It's completely unfounded, the anger that I'm actually receiving from her okay. in saying that I'm doing All right, something that's wrong. Good. That's good. Okay. Um, I have a feeling we're probably going to hear from her frequently going forward. I understand so, that. Um, Anybody have anything, questions? I, I'd like to see a very thorough list of, I don't know how long it will take Kingston and whoever to prepare this, all properties that are, we believe are unsafe or health hazards or just need general work uh, and prioritize that list top to bottom. Worst ones at the top <coughs> and we'll start probably working on them. Yeah. Maybe an update from you with each meeting going forward. Not on the whole list, but what we're at on improving. Yeah. So Dana, I'm just gonna add this for the board because Patty Thomas did contact me in June. I brought that complaint here. She did contact me again in July. I again brought that complaint here and nothing, no callbacks had gone to her. Um, her complaints did start two years ago. Um, the reason it's here tonight is because I asked again in July that there be an update on this. I would like to see a report every week on the status of all these properties. I understand there isn't 40 hours in a day, but I also understand when taxpayers and residents call, they expect to be updated on what's happening, and that does need to be followed up. And I'm not going to say any more about that right now. Anybody else? Anything else from board enforcement? Go ahead, sir. Just a quick question. Is, is it possible that there is another uh, code enforcement position posted? It would cost money, but... Not at this time. We have no. the, we're budgeted for one code enforcement officer. Mm -hmm. Town manager's report. Thank you. All right, so for the town manager report, just a couple of things. I'll make it brief. There's some discussion about referendum town meeting. I've done some research on that. Uh, I forwarded you some information from the town's attorney. I also forwarded you some information from MMA Legal. Um, uh, for instance, MMA Legal states that uh, the selectmen do have the authority if they would like to uh, entertain going to a referendum type town meeting. Um, I've included the information on, on those items. So uh, the reason I'm bringing that up again is where this has been a topic of discussion. Is this something that you would like, uh, meaning you, meaning the board, is this something that you would like the manager to look into further, to look at um, you know, what a potential ballot would look like, um, or is this not something that is of interest? Because if it's not of interest, then I won't. Well, what would be, uh, well, before we talked about this, of like in November, maybe putting that question out to the people. I mean, I realize we get the authority to do it. Yeah. And I know some people feel very strongly about not doing it. I mean, I'm, I'm game with it the way it has been, but we don't get any turnout. And if you're spending $5 million in 20 minutes with 40 people in the room, it doesn't seem like that's a real good representation. So that's just my opinion. There's no reason that we couldn't put a like a non-binding referendum question on in November because we're going to have a town ballot anyway for the K House issue. We could put a non-binding thing on there that just says, uh, "Do you favor you know word it, you know do you favor a referendum town meeting for this coming June or something to that effect?" Rather than the rather than the uh, open town meeting having the old fashioned town meeting. Yeah. You know, oh, you know, one the other way. <laughs> I think it's good to have an open meeting, even though it's only 50 people. That's not 
problem is not the fault of the people that show up for town meeting. There should be another way to be able to get more people to turn out. But I mean, so what you're saying is that the people that do take their time, do, do take their time to turn out for town meeting, don't matter. They should go to the referendum. I don't agree with that. I agree to set with the old system, open meeting, people ask questions, they get answers. I have to support that too. We have a town meeting form of government and um, I, I have never supported the uh, idea of voting on the budget on a referendum ballot. When you're at town meeting, that's the time to ask questions about the budget and the attendance is no different here than in any other town. Attendance has dropped over the years, and it doesn't matter if it's on a weekend or a night or a weekday. It's all the same. I've been involved in towns that have had weekends, uh, weeknights, and it doesn't matter when you have it. You still have the limited vote. And yes, more people do show up when it's time to vote on any ballot because of the referendum, especially if there are state issues on the ballot. But I support keeping the um, our form of government by voting on the budget at an open town meeting. What time would it be to put it out there to ask the people? Why would we? Well, because I don't think you're the only opinion here. No, it seems to be a different one. I know, but I'm just saying. So why would we? we, we have have why, why, why would you? Yeah. Okay, so if you've got uh, 50 people at your meeting, yep. and you want to come in and build a new building for the town office, whether you really want them, but if you bring your 49 people with you, you're going to get it. Is that what you're saying? It's because you're saying that people... If I'm people just saying it's a very poor participation for the mm -hmm. number of people in this town to spend, you spent $5 million, 40 people showed up, and it was all over in 30 minutes. But it's an open meeting. Anybody it is an up? open meeting. Call the, you go to an open meeting. I run my mouth, you run your mouth. I'm not arguing that with you at all. But the average person will not put their hand up at a town meeting and speak their piece. They'll give me how after the meeting of what I should have done, but they won't stand up in front of that. And I also, if when it comes to voting, some people are going to vote by the person that's beside them. If you're in that booth all by yourself, there's only one person that's going to be doing the vote. But what do you know about the budget if yeah. you're going to the booth? Well, you're, you're going to have to have some means to inform them. I'm not, I'm not saying have budget meetings and nobody shows up. So the only people that go to town meeting are really the people that have been involved for years and go. And when you see somebody new going to town meeting, it's because there's a contested issue that's coming up to be voted on. So I'm just saying that your average young person doesn't pay attention to it. They're not going to take a no. Saturday and go do that. And, you know, if we continue, expect different results and we continue down the same road, it ain't going to happen. Scott? If everybody's happy with it, we'll leave it the way it is. But well, I'm only just, three of us have given our opinion so far. I, I feel that I think we ought to put it to the townspeople because I, I have to agree with Floyd that it isn't a true representation of what the town people actually want when it's only 50 people out of 4,000 plus. But is there, we advertise it. Everybody knows when this town meeting. And I, and I mean people, so, you know, what a, just my feeling. Question for Wendy. Uh, Adam, if you know, how many people came out to vote in the last two elections? Was it like 150? 168. So, better than 50. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to have a budget on a November ballot where there's, and we've all seen how the ballots go. If it's a presidential election, we get 2,500 people right. turn out to vote. Yeah, but you don't vote in November. I understand. You're going to be voting in June where you may have primaries, mm -hmm. maybe, every other year. Um, but this past year, this past June, there was 150 people that came to, to vote. Mm -hmm. um, still not a very good representation. I, 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 I like the town meeting style of voting in the I budget. didn't say I did. But <laughs> I agree. I think we could put it to the voters, and I think we should put it to voters. But I think the thousand people that come out to vote in November 
950 of them don't show up at town meeting, and probably a lot of them won't even know what the town meeting is all about. But they're going to vote. Leave it the way it is. I'm just, I give you, you ask my opinion, I give it to you. And I, I think we've all given our opinion. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm split. I don't know. When do we need a decision? What, when do you need to know for this November's the ballot? It must be coming soon. Yeah. Three years out. Yeah, but you have to ask. You know, looking at it, what I've already put in. Do we have two weeks for our next meeting? Yes. Yeah, I'd like to see this on the agenda oh. for the next meeting. And August I, I certainly 17. want to talk to some people and get their feel of it. Do you want me to try and draft a, draft a sample, uh, you know, referendum question on this so you guys can at least see some language on what that might look like? Or? Uh, so, um, I mean, I don't know. If you put it out there and they vote it down and we keep it the way it is. I don't really want anybody to be scared about putting it out there. I don't think, well, anybody no, scared about I don't think anybody's scared about putting it no. out there. We were asked what our opinion was. Oh, and okay. we gave our opinion, period, of keeping it as an open town meeting or having a referendum to vote on the budget. And you mentioned a $5 million building. We would never put that at an open town meeting to be voted on that way. We had a well, I, it was a you know, I know, but that's not a it good wasn't, I, wasn't, I didn't really think that answer to it, Karen. I'm sorry. How did this come about? So it started with the last we, 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 at the meeting, at the meeting, after a town meeting, we complained that nobody was there. It took 30 minutes. We spent a lot of money. And you get 60 people out of 4,000 show up. I don't think we had that many, did we? Yeah, there's, you know, 200 people show up. And I, I think to the credit of the town manager, and this is a town manager thing because the town manager is the one that does the budget. And when the town manager puts a budget together, that you're sitting there and you, there are no questions to ask because he, he's been so thorough in getting the budget out there. So. He explains everything so good, and I think a lot of, especially young people, they don't even know what town government is all about. Well, I was trying to get some of them interested. They're not going to. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. Well, then we might as well jump out of the boat now, right? <laughs> <laughs> can, we, can, can you, when you, when you bring us, when you bring this back, can you bring up, can you find an example of what a town budget would look like on a referendum? I can do that. Because it's not all one. It's, it's going to be... No, I mean, it'd be individual. And what happens if they vote that down in June and your budget's supposed to start in July? Mm -hmm. What's the process? <laughs> it'd be the same process as though they voted it down at an open town meeting. Right. You have to go back for another vote. But is it another ballot vote? So yeah. now you're going to have a special... You're going to have to have another ballot vote if that's how you voted on it. Yeah. And there's so many days because Gorham just went through that. The lady in the back had a question. I was just going to comment. I'm one of those young people that doesn't show up to those meetings, and I apologize. <laughs> and it's, it is. It's a lack of ignorance of, of what you do on a daily basis, and the, I think our whole society is that way right now. Mm -hmm. It's we all expect everything, and we don't want to be involved. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to even say that out loud, but that's who I am. Um, so there is guilt here. <laughs> so what, do, what would you feel about the question? Jeez. I'm embarrassed. I, I, I don't, I think going to the town meeting, well, it used to be this uh, social event and it used to be a place where, you know, you knew what was going on. I don't. I don't. So I don't have an opinion. I don't have a right to have an opinion on it as far as I'm concerned. Um, and by not going, I'm not educated on what I should be educated on. And that's on me. And that's on so the 95% of people. Would you be educated if you went in a booth? And no. No. That's what, no. And that's what, that's what, what I just said. And it's that blind, oh, geez, what am I yeah. doing here? Yeah. I, it's, uh, you know, I'm. And you're going to look at the number. You're going to look at the number. Wow, they're asking for. I typically go, yeah, they need that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I know I'm not the only one. I'm, I'm just being honest, you know. The Harrison went through this where they stopped holding it, and now they do it again. So if anybody wants to. They went away from town meeting, and then they. Yeah, so th th there's precedent. They've too. gone back to it? Yes. And they did the same thing in Freiburg. They went to a ballot vote. It didn't work. Half, I'm not going to say half, but several department budgets were voted down. They could not start the new uh, budget year because they didn't have the money to operate. So then you have so many days that you have to wait before you go back again. And they quickly got rid of that referendum vote and went back to open town meeting. So. Do it the way you guys do it in Augusta. <laughs> Vote wherever. So I like, I mean, as a young person like Caldy, we grew up <coughs> from our yeah, parents. Go. We grew up from he our parents be being involved in town like government. So that's what I do. love town government. So does Caldy. But we grew up with it. I mean, I didn't even grow up around here where he is, but I, that's how we came into it at our age. I've made my kids growing up involved in it, just like Caldy has. But if you're not involved with that as people of our generation, then you don't have any idea what it's about. Do they teach municipal government, town government, school anymore? No, no they do not. Uh, well, so, my so this is why to preserve town government is, I think, is very important. I mean, it's some kind of a buddy-to-buddy -buddy type yeah. system. You know, it's like grab your buddy, show up to yeah. I was thinking we might try to prove it. I, I don't think about preserving anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, we got away with everything. We'll come up with an app. Can we get the next one? Yeah, yeah. get in on an app. Get get in on an app. app. You know, all other that. updates for the time manager. All right. Well, that was an interesting discussion. Um, you were just, uh, so, yes. <laughs> So I wanted to give another couple updates here. One is regarding the town revaluation um, that's moving along. Um, we are supposed to be closer to completion than we are. They have asked for a short, a few week extension, which I'm comfortable with moving on, moving with the extension. Uh, they have provided, and I've given you that, the uh, copy of the new schedule. It's still going to be done in time for us to do our commitment on time, still in time for us to get the tax bills out, all those kind of things. They just needed a few more weeks to, to start doing the uh, notices and informal hearings and so forth. So that's moving along um, as it should be. Another item on this uh, piece too is we had talked about assessor assessing hours and so forth. I am planning on uh, going ahead and I want to advertise for an assessing agent. Um, moving forward, just to start seeing what we what we get for interest, um, but I think we're going to need to have a conversation probably about uh, more assessing agent hours than we already have. So, um, Pismo Beach retaining wall. The engineer, as we talked about the last meeting, is now going to start the design and surveying phase, so that can be taken care of. Uh, 207 waste. The contract was signed, and he's going to be. Uh, get, I believe he's already getting started now. And then I also just wanted to make notes, back on uh, July 7th, there was an incident that occurred that the uh, Oxford Police Department was uh, called over to assist Norway um, with a homicide that had happened over there. And I just wanted to give uh, a, just a shout out to the police chief and Brandon Korea and Andre Chase. They were the Oxford officers that went over to Norway. Um, they were faced with a pretty dangerous situation. The suspect was still on scene, um, had a dangerous weapon. Uh, the long story short of it is uh, Oxford officers were able to uh, engage the suspect and uh, with non-lethal force were able to subdue him and get him in custody. So um, though there was a homicide that occurred, they were able to, uh, to uh, remedy the situation without further loss of life. And I think that's worth uh, making note of. I think they did a, did a wonderful job there. So I just wanted to note that. Uh, other than that, that's what I have uh, for tonight. Thank you. Selectman items. I had emailed you about that sort of equipment. I don't remember if I emailed everybody or not. You did. Uh -huh. I'm just curious as to what's going on with that. 
So the sewer jetter, um, I, I followed up with uh, Jim, the highway foreman on that. So my understanding is it has been being used for uh, sewer related things, but not for highway related things. Um, it will, however, now that uh, I've had some discussions about it, it will, however, be using for culvert clearing starting next week. Um, I was actually just asked this about an hour before the meeting, but the Pismo Beach um, building, uh, where the concession stand is, and there are two bathrooms there. So when um, boaters are coming in at night down to Pismo and it's dark, they've noticed that um, the light to the bathroom door, to the bathrooms are on, one or two of them, and the doors are opened. I don't know if there have been arrangements made that those doors should be locked and the lights turned off, but I do know that the police do um, drive down there and check the property <coughs> more than once a night because I see them going down. So I don't see any reason that the bathroom doors and the lights should be on and not locked because there are porta johns there if anyone needs to use the bathroom that's using coming in from their boat. So maybe when the officers go down to do their rounds down there after dark, maybe they could just lock those bathroom doors and shut the lights off if they see it. Unless there's some reason why those doors need to be opened and the lights on. I mean, my, my preference would be they'd be secured at night. So mm -hmm. um, I'm sure that if you folks see that they're unlocked, you could be a good oh, double check, but I'll talk to the rec director about making okay. sure that they're secured before the day's out. Because so. I know she's not there, you know, up until dark, mm -hmm. so, uh, and there's there's no one else that would be down there to do that, so, so that was all I had. The only thing I had is, Floyd had already mentioned it about just before the quarry, the trailer that sits back in, and all the rubbish tires and everything else, all that. How do we make out on the geese? I don't know yet. They're there, <laughs> and they seem to be coming back with vengeance. You know, I see something the other day. I, I wouldn't believe it. it. Huh? You were telling me about yeah, it. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I hadn't seen it anywhere else. I have a plane golf, and they uh, had some nice fake koi dog. And I asked, I said, I don't remember ever seeing them here before. So they haven't been. I said, what are them? Said, the geese. So we have a massive problem with these. Says, How do they work? He said, remarkably well. I don't, I don't know if he could have been lying to me or whatever, but it was the, one of the groundskeepers that I was talking to. And I'd never seen him before, but they, you know, if you saw it across the field, when you get up to it, you... Did they have one down there before? There was a cardboard that got stolen? They did have something like yeah, that, they, didn't they? There, there yeah, there was once before. Yeah. I mean, this wasn't cardboard. This, you, you, you know, you get rid of it. Like a 3D target or yeah. something? Yeah, it looked like, it, it looked like koi dust. Huh. I didn't, I was just throwing that out to you. The only other thing I got is you, you have got most of your road things taken care of, but last week there I mentioned to you that if you come out Schoolhouse Road and you look to the left, there's a tree limb that's right, right down looking, you, you can't see by it. You gotta get in the road to see by it. You know. It's looking back towards the 26. Yeah, if you, if you just come out, you know, and look back towards 26, You'll know what it is. Anybody that yeah. goes through there can pick it up pretty quick. Yeah, I'll give Jim credit. He's actually been doing pretty good. I'm not doing no, something. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Dana, I think Claudia has a question maybe about the geese. Now that I'm here, you got me. Um, funny you mentioned that about the koi dog. 121 coming through Casco Village just today, this afternoon. They had two of those uh, koi dog. Really? They look real. Yeah. right at the edge of the pond and there were no geese and i just drove you know i'm like oh that's pretty cool the guy down anyway, there said he's he's going down the really good. For it. there were 30 <laughs> geese on the other side of the driveway yeah, yeah. so they were just <laughs> off the property they weren't on the water side yeah. so. <laughs> i've seen those those live ones the 3d type for 160 dollars yeah don't they have them at 100 places they have them at cabela's cabela's yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you can order them. Yeah, you must order. have VIP points down there or something. Don't you? We'll, we'll, we'll talk to them. <laughs> I just thought we had to make a trip to Cabela's. That's what I heard. 
Amen. It's um, a good idea. Any other sort of items? Scott? I don't know, I forget what it was. <laughs> Coy dogs took it away. Sign warrants. We got a few up there in the neighborhood. Bush is going to be a lot of kind of files in there. So you can not see them. Afterwards, I'll do a public hearing. Yeah. For what? Vehicles? Town vehicles. Are they right now? They done dead? 